SV Boney is a Hong Kong-based optics maker known for making affordable astronomical optics for amateur astronomers, but they also make some full-featured terrestrial telescopes. This is the SV46 20 by 60 power by 80 millimeter spotting scope. We'll see what you get in the box and then test it out in the field in today's episode of Moondog R&D. America, this is a SV Boney um, spotting scope. This is their SV46 20 to 60 power by 80 millimeter spotting scope. And this is the retail package that you get. Love the uh, iconography there. Anyway, let's see what you get in the box. And I want to thank SV Boney of Hong Kong for sending this out to me for a test and review. Inside of the box, uh, we get a uh, Christmas stocking. No, no, this is uh, the uh, this is the carrying bag for the scope. Look underneath here. Ah, we have the scope itself. Well, we have a cleaning cloth. This is definitely not microfiber. Very old school. Uh, looks like muslin. So we have our instruction manual here, um, our pamphlet. We have English, Japanese, Deutsch, Italiano, Francais, and Espanol. So there you go. Read your instruction manual. Alrighty. A hmm, little piece of tissue. We have a strap for our uh, our carry bag, and we have our scope. Nicely padded, by the way, so very well protected inside of here. And unlike their lower price mo tier models, this does not come with a tripod, because if they're assuming that if you are buying this, their higher tier, their other scopes, you will already have a high quality tripod. Let's take a look at this scope. It feels substantial. I can already feel just from the weight of it. The mass of it is much more substantial than their budget tier scopes. Oh, yes. And this looks like a proper spotting scope in terms of just the fit and finish here. You've got front lens cap, and it's pretty tight. All right, so this is a detachable sunshade. And oh, all right. So this just was very, very, very tightly attached to the sunshade here that uh, I could not pull it off. That's how tight the seal was on this. So that just speaks to um, how waterproof this thing is. It is IPX7 rated. So this is definitely made for taking out into the field and you don't have to worry about water leaking in and moisture getting into the unit. There is a, um, the unit has two focuses, a fast focus and a fine focus. You turn this and there is a, a conversion gear in the inside. So as you turn your fast focus, your fine focus knob spins. That is definitely nicely engineered. So you, something you'd find in higher end scopes. It has a, a mounting ring here that allows you to change the direction. So you, you'd mount this onto your tripod or your uh, adapter plate like an Arca Swiss. And then you loosen up this knob here and this allows you to turn it. So, oh, and it's indexed. Do you hear that? Oh, that's nice. That is a nice feature. It's an index, index ring. That's so this allows you to, um, to mount it sideways um, if you are, say, on a table, or if you um, are looking, it allows you to look down because it is an angled eyepiece. But let's say if uh, you were uh, sitting down and on a taller tripod, you, that way you don't have to stand up, you could turn this downwards and look through it this way. So gives you a lot of options. Okay, let me just tighten that down. It has a built-in eye cup, which is nice. It also indexes. You can hear those clicks. And let me just feel. Oh, nice. Notice here too, this is a very large uh, eyepiece here. So you're gonna get a, a good, 
a good amount of uh, field of view as well as a very generous eye box uh, based on the size of uh, uh, this uh, ocular lens here on the eyepiece. And it is changeable, so you can remove the eyepiece if you have another eyepiece that you want to use with higher magnification, or lower magnification for that matter. It goes from 20 to 60 power in a, a little less than a 90 degree throw or rotation there. And it is, um, it is a, a textured ribbed uh, with a rubberized coating on uh, the uh, on the magnification ring or the power ring so that you can grasp it even where if it's a uh, inclement weather and you're wearing gloves this should this should work fine most actually the 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 majority of the eyepiece rotates as you can see by the removing logo here um, but the rear eye cup does not move so it's just this large metal ring but this allows you to change the magnification without having to deal with um, repositioning your camera so that is great for those who are using this uh, for uh, for birding and uh, videotaping um, animals and uh, wildlife so there we go let's take it out outdoors out to the range and out to the scenery and see how it looks Okay, we're looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 12, 1,200 yards uh, downrange, and we've got the uh, the spotting scope set at its lowest power setting of 20, so we can get uh, the best rendition through the lens, uh, the optics here at its lowest uh, magnification. Uh, we're getting the most contrast, uh, color saturation, uh, vibrancy, and sharpness. So this is at 20 power and um, I'm gonna bring it up to its maximum here all right so we're looking now at 60 power I had to adjust the, uh, the position of the camera the eye relief got very very shallow at its highest magnification I'm practically um, looking through naked eye I have to get practically eyelash distance on this particular eyepiece, which is a little, I mean, if for those of you who've ever used uh, telescopes, that's not unusual, but for a spotting scope, uh, it can be a little bit annoying uh, in the field. Uh, just something to be aware, with, aware of with this particular uh, scope and eyepiece setup. Uh, you, get, you have to get very close and you do lose uh, quite a bit. Um, you have to make some adjustments if you're mounting a camera like I am. We can see there um, the detail. And this is as sharp as I've been able to get. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that is as sharp. I'm using the, the fine focus on here. And that is as sharp as I'm able to get the, the scope um, at 60 power there. But we even here, I can we can clearly make out the top of uh, Mount Davidson, the trail marker sign there you see in the center. That's that pole. That's about, a, uh, I think, about a 30, 36 inch tall sign on a pole there, which is about five, six inches, I mean, five, six feet tall. And with that red um, in the bottom there, that is a uh, concrete casement in front of the trail marker sign. And somebody obviously put some graffiti of some sort. But the fact that you can see that and uh, the venting, um, the, the uh, pipe vent there, it just shows you what kind of detail you're, you're getting and you can even see the hikers walking past uh, the trail marker sign there. All right, let's look at something a little bit closer and see if we can find any birds to look at for those of you bird watchers. All right, we're back at 20 power and I am looking at the top of uh, this 60 foot tall pine tree here about uh, 50 yards away exactly. Uh, and I am not able to find any birds. You know, considering how gusty it is, I'm not surprised they aren't out. They're hunkered down. All right, there you go. That's the kind of detail that you can get. 60 power from 50 yards away. This is a test of this SV46 scope. Uh, I've got it at 20 power. So let's bring it up 
to 60 power here. Okay, this is the scope at 60 power, and let me just take a video still at this point so we can avoid any uh, shake from uh, the wind or heat shimmer distorting the image. I can see some noticeable chromatic aberrations. If you look at the uh, white target frame, the top left of it, you can see a purple fringe. You can also see a, um, a bit of that on the uh, top of the concrete wall there as it uh, meets the foliage. The optics and the coatings aren't good enough to compensate for those chromatic distortions, those color distortions. Also note that the image is not tack sharp from edge to edge. While the center is in focus, the outer edges are soft. So let's take a look at clarity and sharpness, the kind of detail that this scope optics are able to resolve. First, let's take a look at the brown paper target that I brought from a shooting range. I can make out a 22 caliber hole below the center shoot and see sticker, as well as a second 22 caliber hole near the bottom edge of this paper target. Next, let's take a look at the US Air Force optical resolution chart on the bottom right. I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines down to element four in group zero which is pretty darn good, though it's only this sharp at the center of the image. Before I get started talking about what I think of this scope after testing it, I want to ask you to please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's free, it just takes a second to hit those buttons, but it's an easy way for you to support my efforts in creating these review videos. There's a lot to like in the SV46. The build quality and features are much higher than you'd expect for a scope that retails for under $300. Perhaps its only underwhelming features are its image quality and eye relief. But in the end, you saw what I saw. Leave me a comment, let me know if you think the SV46 is a good value. And if you're interested in getting this scope, you'll find product links and more information on my blog, MoondogIndustries.com. Thanks for watching. Moondog out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.